Last year in lockdown, I was trying to think outside the box for rebuilds. We went to retro rebuilds. We had a couple of fun ones with a few spins on them. We tried rebuilding a team that no longer exists. I mean, technically they don't. They had to form a new Phoenix club and go under a brand new name. However, some of you in the comments weren't satisfied. Today's situation with this team, it is all 100% real. No clickbait here. I actually can't believe this story it hasn't been covered more in the media. This was a team that back in February would have solved as the investment company Company completely pulled out a team with over 63 years of history Jiangsu Suning the Chinese Super League outfit have completely been dissolved unless they get new investors which doesn't look likely they completely don't exist they're not gonna be in FIFA 22 the club the fans have been completely abandoned it's not the kind of footballing story you ever want to hear and this happened back in February the Suning investment group literally had some fun played with a football club like a toy and dipped I don't want to play with you anymore Fresh after winning their first ever Chinese Super League title, you wouldn't expect the trajectory of the club to be going in this direction. But hey, here they are in this mess. Sir BCHD has arrived in what could potentially be their last FIFA ever. He's here to put on another masterclass, managing in a team slash league where he's never been tested before. It's going to be an epic adventure, one hell of a challenge, and it's going to be the perfect farewell to the club. Instead of participating in the Chinese Super League, we're going to give them the opportunity of competing in Europe as we've dropped them in Spain's second tier as potentially one day they can be fighting for Champions League glory. The investors might have pulled out but there is no chance we aren't investing our full time and efforts into reviving this team and getting them to the pinnacle of world football. Here is your introduction to the starting 11, your one star Jiangsu Suning. To be totally honest with you, I've got no idea who these players are, I've never heard of them, they all don't even have faces so can they even be real? With a name like Dong Feng, I'm having serious doubts. Nonetheless, major improvements are needed. First of all, players with actual faces because we're rocking with the no face gang and we haven't even got a full reserves bench either. The Suning investment group haven't left us with the best of squads as we literally have the minimum capacity you can have. I can't even release any players. The squad size is way too small so we have definitely got a task on our hands with the highest rated player being the captain, a 21 year old Chinese striker Huang Jianyu. It's going to be fascinating to find out how many of these Chinese talents are going to last within this team. For the time being we are managing an absolute shipwreck as the transfer budget consists of just over 8 million pounds. Not enough to do damage with, but enough where we can strategically make some moves for the future. You can bet your bottom dollar that I'm taking full advantage of the Youth Academy, especially the homegrown talent, and considering that we've moved ourselves into Spain, we get a Spanish homegrown talent, and he goes by the name of Daniel Barrera. The 16-year-old is already at a 68 overall. He's going to be crowned the best player in the team once we promote him. 71 to 94 potential, can play at CM or CDM, is already 6 foot 2, 4 star skills, 4 star weak foot and his attributes are actually pretty solid so you know what he's getting automatically promoted. I'm getting some serious Maradona vibes I'm not gonna put that pressure on him but at 16 years of age he gets an automatic ticket into the first team. Now the first player joining us in this brand new era without their Suning investment group under Sir BCHD Bart Verbruggen will join us here over in Spain's second tier. The 17 year old Dutch shot stopper will be our main man in between the sticks he's showing great potential that was definitely a main area of concern and now we've got our main man for possibly the next five or ten years. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that he's gonna last us the entire rebuild and for the time being he's one of the only players in this team with a face. Franco Orozco, Mike O'Down is one of the best footballing names ever as we sign a brand new outfield player. The Argentine winger arrives from Lanús for 1.6 million pounds. He can play on either side of the wings and our brand new number 20 is an exciting prospect. I love these kind of more wacky and random rebuilds, unique situations that we get put in because then I'm forced to scout players like Franco Orozco. I had never heard of the 18 year old before this, so welcome to the club mate. I hope you can become a legend. We're on a bit of a purchasing tirade right now, securing bargain after bargain. We have given the green light to Luca Oyen, a Belgian superstar talent in the making. The teenager arrives from KRC Gankover in Belgium and is showing great potential. Thanks to Ozorko's versatility, he can play out on the right hand side. Meanwhile, Luca Oyen will occupy the left wing spot. With a deal worth around 1.5 5 million pounds. The roster's slowly growing. We're acquiring better players and wonder kids for the future. However, that doesn't come with our player departures and sales. We've had a thinning squad now with a couple of more players involved. We have the luxury of a player sale with Luo Jui headed off to a team name I'm assuming that's in the Chinese Super League. I'm not going to bother pronouncing it because I know I'll butcher it. His release clause was activated for 370k. It's another sensational recruit we've signed here, arriving on a bargain fee. A prosperous youth academy 
Miami talent from PSG. It is Kays Ruiz Atil. I can't believe it's taken me this long to sign the Moroccan cam for the first time in FIFA 21, but here we are. The 17-year-old has signed on the dotted line for 1.25 million pounds. We got him well under his valuation. He's an exciting prospect, and as a Moroccan cam, I don't want to compare him, but it kind of brings me Hashim Mastor flashbacks. I don't want to introduce him into that environment where he has all the pressure put on him, so good vibes only. Let's hope Ruiz Atil lives up to the hype for Extinct FC. He might be on the move to Venezia in real life. However, the American is following a different path here in our career mode save because for £2 million, we've purchased the next big American superstar, Gianluca Buzio from Sporting Kansas City. The MLS youngster will be joining us here in La Liga Smart Bank and is going to serve in the squad as a CDM. Fresh off winning the Gold Cup with the US on the brink of a big transfer move to Europe. I'm very much looking forward to the future with this 18-year-old star. When I say we have literally squeezed every single last penny out of the transfer budget for this last signing we have. As this team's now competing in Spain, I wanted to bring in some local and domestic talent and it's a player, Nico Serrano, who is arriving from Athletic Bilbao. The Basque region's academy stars are severely underrated and Serrano is no exception. He has that special something at a 62 overall. We agreed a fee of just over a million pounds considering we barely have a backup for Huang Jan Yu. I feel like the 17 year old has enough time to train and mold himself into a pretty decent and backup super sub. So after pretty much using every single penny left in our budget, that's our last summer acquisition. This club looked to be in the mud, but Sir Beast YSG has come through with a minor miracle here in this transfer period. It's been extremely productive, spending 8.9 million pounds on so many brand new upgrades and purchases. One player departing the club, and on deadline day with one hour left, we are ready to jump straight into this brand new season. I've decided to shake things up with the team formation. I've been loving these three at the back tactics lately, and we've got ourselves a 3-5-1-1. Barreda, the homegrown talent, Buzio, Ruiz Atil, all in the starting 11. Two brand new wingers and the 21-year-old Chinese captain will be leading the line. Checking the standings come the end of the season and we're not in a good spot right now. This place is not what I was expecting. I thought we could aim a bit higher but second last, we were 21st with 31 points. Jiang Su Suning, this is not the ideal start to life in La Liga Smart Bank. The second tier of Spanish football is ruthless and as you can tell, we are a a long way away from challenging for playoffs or even getting promotion as Espanyol and Leganes both get promoted. It was an early exit in the Copa de España round one saw us eliminated 2-1 to Tenerife. UD Almeria did go ahead and win the playoffs 1-0 against Girona and the Champions League this season. It was Oil Club versus Oil Club. Manchester City took that one out 2-1 against PSG. The two favourites to sign Messi going head-to-head -head as Leicester go out and take the Europa League. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with this squad. I know there are a lot of unhappy faces in the team, but we've got a young and promising side. I think the inexperience might have just been our downfall as we've got the 22-year-old captain Huang Jian Yu with potential legend status written all over him. He scored 13 goals and 3 assists, got himself a plus 4 upgrade this season. Seconds up to the plate is our Argentine winger Franco Orozco. He can be our very own Messi, the 19-year-old with a plus 5, now landing at a 70 overall. 8 goals and 3 assists for him. Gianluca Buzio from the midfield at CDM. He's killing it. Plus 1 for overall, 5 goals and 3 assists. The American, we've got the homegrown talent. The 17 year old got himself 27 appearances, 2 goals and 3 assists. Decent experience just like when it comes to our Moroccan cam Ruiz Atil. 2 goals and 3 assists for him. We've still got our Chinese winger Ding Jing Juning. I thought it said Dingle Jingle for a second. I might just stick to that nickname as the 24 year old scored 2 goals. Luca Oyen, our Belgian 18 year old with 28 games, 1 goal and 1 assist. We've got Werder Braga, our brand new starting goalkeeper. Only with 3 clean sheets to boast about. Having a rough start to life here in Spain as our highest overall valued asset is Daniel Barrera. He's a youth academy baller for a reason with a price tag of 4.2 million pounds. I guess we just use this season as a building block. We cop the slap on the wrist and hope we can build for the better. Come the second campaign we've had a whole year of experience behind us as we aim next time around for at least mid table. Now we're not greeted with the nicest budget around for the new season however it's what you come to expect when you're dangling around in the lower ends of the second tier but it's enough so that we can success pull off some bargain deals. We're wasting a little to no time here in this summer transfer window addressing a problem area we struggled with last season and that was defense. With our three at the back, we need a strong and competent center back. Not that our players currently aren't already doing that, but we need some higher overall, some quality, and we've brought in Armel Bellicott chap. The 19-year-old center half arrives from Bochum for four million pounds. An exciting prospect from the Bundesliga, the German will slot straight into that starting 11. To be fair, he was on my radar in season one but we just didn't have the financial means to
to bring him in. So finally, we can welcome him on over. Nothing too fancy or shiny for our second free agent. That is the goalkeeper, Geiska Ayesa. I saw him wandering around in the free agency and I thought he'd be a great backup for our current Dutch number one. Considering our formation demands central defensive midfielders, we need competent and strong players in those roles. And we've done exactly that by acquiring the 18-year-old David Ayala. Yet another talent source from Argentina as he arrives for three million pounds from Estudiantes. He is five foot eight, so he's a very small midfielder, has a low center of gravity and can be the pivot. He'll join his fellow countryman Orozco in the starting 11. So let's hope the Argentine duo can return the favor. For our fourth player pickup of the window, we've had to delve into the free agency again where I saw a perfect candidate for a starting center back, David Alba. The Spaniard at only 22 years of age is already 66 overall and could possibly partner up with Bella Kotrap to be one of those three starting center backs. Another great deal we've capitalized on and again, we're in Spain, so we might as well go ahead and match the domestic talent. Now, I'm actually excited to announce one of our first sales of the rebuild so far. We have got our man, Ding Jungi, or as I like to call him, Dingle Jingle. For 1.3 million pounds, we've been able to move him on to Dundee United. The Chinese winger will be packing his bag for Scotland, and finally, we get a bit of cash injected into the club. Now, Huang Jiang Yu's got a lot on his plate. He's the captain of the club. He's the one and only sole striker leading the line, so I thought we needed to try and ease the pressure off him. Let's bring in a backup center forward as we've got the perfect attacking option, a super sub in off the bench, Claudio Mendes. The 20 year old is signed on the dotted line and he has arrived for 2.1 million pounds, showing great potential and is also quite versatile. Can play at right mid and left mid if we need him to. Yet another Spaniard, we purchased him from Las Palmas. Now we've had to move mountains almost as big as our new boy Onana as he arrives from Hamburger SV. Yet another signing we have poached from the Bundesliga as our new six foot four Belgian is an exciting prospect. He's a CDM slash center mid. Was one of my main targets for season one, but again, the financial situation wasn't there. And upon his arrival, he has drained our entire transfer budget. However, I am looking to convert him into a center back. I think he's got some decent defensive capabilities, some nice strength in there as well. I just want him to be a fluid player that can play anywhere in the spine. And converting him into a center back is going to be one of our main goals this year. I'm keen to see how his career progresses at Jiangsu Suning. Just some more training news and position conversion updates I've got to keep you guys aware of. We've got Franco Orozco we're deploying him out on the right hand side I still don't know why it's taken us this long to convert him into a proper right winger even though he can play competently on either side. He's now a fully fledged right winger training on the adverted winger development plan Nothing too groundbreaking here as we've got our second player departure it is Dong Yi headed off to Gangwon FC. He'll be moving back to the homeland for 270k as we continue to try ease the pressure of our wage bill. That's what I'm talking about what a summer we have had. Spending 13.15 million pounds gives her BCHD restricted transfer budget and he's still going to be able to do a job. Find you some hidden gem talents and rejuvenate the team. Our squad is looking so much more threatening now with those new additions, especially with a revolutionized back three of Onana, Bella Kotchap and Alba. Ayala slots into the CDM spot and Extinct FC is looking as ready as ever to take on the second division. Now we've come to the end of the season and over in La Liga Smart Bank from second and last to just sneaking our way into the playoffs for season two. Our boys Jiangsu Suning have secured that sixth place spot and with 68 points they have the chance to grab the third place promotion spot as Levante and Sporting go up automatically. We have been the most improved team in the division by far. Things that you love to see as we go into the playoffs we have our Copa de España run which was actually quite magical. They made it all the way to the quarterfinals the deepest they've gone considering getting knocked out in round one didn't really set the bar to too high. Eliminated from the cup to Osasuna 2-0. Now I've gone to the very last promotion playoff game. It's the second leg of the final. We're down 2-1. I want to watch this one play out. I'll sim it and see how we go. Can we make up this deficit and earn our place in La Liga? Oyen's going to miss out. He picked up a red card and we had to shuffle a few things around in the starting 11. However, now we are up against Rayo Vallecano at home. We'll quick sim this one. Our whole entire season comes down to this. And there we have it. It is a comfortable 2-0 win, which sees us win a 3-2 on aggregate. Onana and Jan Yu with the goals. One in the first half, one in the second. Rayo Vallecano got sent down to 10 men and we capitalized with a professional display that sees this game promotion to La Liga. Barcelona, Real Madrid, the Jiangsu boys are coming for you. A team that doesn't even exist nowadays. They are ready to take on the big boys, the top dogs of Spanish football as Huang Jan Yu again provides. Here in the second tier, the captain with a plus three to his overall score, an 18 goal and one assist.
assists, especially that winner in the final. What a career and campaign he's having so far. We've got Franco Orozco with 13 goals and two, our right winger with a plus six. Now ready for the first tier, his winger partner on the opposite side of the flank, Luca Oyen, who unfortunately missed out on the final. 11 goals and five assists for the Belgian. We've got Kays Rui Zatil, who makes things tick in the middle, is our main creator. As a Moroccan with 16 goal contributions, it is some brilliant output from the youngster. Gianluca Buzio continues to surpass expectations. As a CDM, he's understanding the assignment. Six goals and five assists for the American Amadou Onana, who fulfilled his brand new role at centre back. Five goals and two assists for the 20 year old the Belgian. Our homegrown talent, Bareda, with 12 assists. He's been our main playmaker this campaign, altogether 16 goal contributions. Claudio Mendes with four goals off the bench. We decided to spice things up, get him some new boots, untuck his shirt. David Ayala with his first campaign here in the second tier. He's fit straight into our starting 11 with 51 appearances, two goals and three assists. Scrolling towards the bottom, we have a lot of deadwood we still need to sell off. Bella Kotchap with a gargantuan campaign, a plus five to his overall, and Verbruggen with 21 clean sheets. That is a vast improvement from season one's three. We're one of the most ambitious projects in the country right now. Gaining promotion has just set us on a brand new trajectory as Armel Bella Kotchap is our highest valued asset. The German center back with a 15.5 million pound price tag and a Franco Orozco, how could we forget? The Argentine winger who I'm expecting to stay on top of the charts for years to come now. At only 20 years of age, La Liga is approaching. If there was a third division of Spain in FIFA, we would have been relegated. Thankfully, that has played into our hands and it's propelled us into La Liga action come season three. As much as I'm looking forward to it and I'm excited for the future ahead, it is gonna be a daunting task. I am absolutely gobsmacked. Look at the transfer budget the board has allocated us. For our first stint in the top flight, 36 million pounds. Everyone's expecting us to be the league whipping boys and in a relegation battle all year long. However, with those resources, that is going to help us out a whole bunch. We're striving this season to be out of the relegation zone and I couldn't pass up on the offer to sign Aliax Moriba on a free. This guy, a Lamasia Youth Academy product. What are Barcelona doing letting one of their biggest talents go just like that? I was initially excited about our transfer budget, then I realized I had to renew pretty much the whole team's contracts. We're only left with around 20 million pounds to play with, so free agency is kind of the go right now. To sustainably bring in new players, whilst also increasing our depth and quality, Moriba is going to be a stunning addition. Now, I know taking advantage of free agents isn't everyone's cup of tea. It's just the situation we've been put in. We've got to make the most of them. However, I will be slowing our reliance of them down as we've brought in yet another giant for the back line at six foot four, Matt Miazga. The centre back will be our second American to join the team alongside Gianluca Buzio, the former Chelsea youth academy. Academy player will be slotting right into our back line. A transfer listed at Jiangsu Original has been on the transfer list for quite some time now. He's finally found a new club. The Chinese right back will be joining Maritimo over in Portugal for 960k. Even though they've been part of the team that has helped us reach the pinnacle of this club so far, promotion to the top flight, we still have to say goodbye to a few more players. As a Chinese midfielder, Kong Kui Kuyang will be sold to Genoa for 1.7 million pounds. Thanks to those couple of sales, We've been able to invest again in some defensive cover and it's going to be the signing of Oscar Mingueza, the ex-Barcelona centre-back. We've had to pick him up from Leicester City for £6 million. He's versatile, can play a centre-back and right-back, but we're obviously going to use him in the centre-half role to come in in case of injury, suspension. He's the perfect second choice. Now, this is fascinating. It's the curious case of Santiago Jimenez. I've got so many questions because I was originally scouting him for season one. He's our brand new number 15, the Mexican striker for 7.2 million pounds has arrived from Chelsea. Originally from a team in Liga Mexis, maybe Cruz Azul. Chelsea beat us to the punch and we've recruited him here for La Liga. And I know you're thinking, not another striker. Well, we have got him to be a striker, a centre forward and a cam. He is extremely versatile, can play anywhere in that attacking spine. And that's what I absolutely love about him. The Mexican who, I don't know about you guys, but is he related to Jose Maria Jimenez, even though he's Uruguayan? I know it doesn't make sense. They just look very similar. You know, it could be a long lost brother situation. Here. I don't know. He looks like he's about it. He's rocking the headband. He's got the fluoro boots. Here at Jiangsu Suning, it might be his time to shine. With signing after signing, we focused our majority of our efforts on the outfield players. However, I've decided to go in for one last big deal. It is going to be the transfer of Andre Radu, the Romanian shot stopper, arriving from Inter for 14.7 million pounds. I'm pretty sure he's been our most expensive player, and I've recruited the 25 year old to be our main number one. I don't think the 19 year old is ready. Maybe he can overtake him in the future, but I just need a solid pair of hands in between the sticks, especially in the first
first division. We all know how important having a decent rated goalkeeper is when simulating. I thought Radu was in our price range. He does the job. We've managed to close out our deals in a calm and professional manner. No need to stress throughout deadline day. We're just kicking back waiting for the window to close. As we reflect on the market that was £27.9 million spent, couple of free agents brought in, leaves us with £2.66 million of profit. Here is how our strongest starting 11 is looking as we're in for an uphill battle for La Liga survival. I think these boys have got what it takes despite their young age and inexperience to gain salvation. We've got the quality. There's room to improve and get even better. We've got the likes of the new boys, Moriba, Jimenez and Mingueza on the bench. Fingers crossed because anything can happen. In our debut outing for the top flight, I guess we stick out like a sore thumb. We don't have that cool transparent looking badge. We finished in 14th. That is all we wanted. Anything above the relegation zone and that is considered a success with 42 points. We were actually comfortably holding our heads above water as Rabatis, Sporting Gijon and Osasuna all get relegated. Moving over to the top of the table, which is where we're aiming. These are the kind of teams we're going to be going head to head against and fighting for silverware. Atletico winning the league, Real Madrid, Valencia and Barcelona are making up the top four. Over in the Copa de España, I don't think we had such a miracle run like last year. We were actually pretty close to replicating that, getting eliminated in the round of 16 on penalties to Ibar 4-3. Now, I wonder what players were the key elements in keeping us up this year? Who were the main pieces of the puzzle? Let's find out as Huang Jianyu, no matter what league he's in, is fine in the back of the net. Do not doubt this man as our Chinese striker, the captain with a plus two to his overall, 23 years of age, scoring 12 and assisting two. 38 appearances for him. Meanwhile, Franco Orozco with 11 goals in 44 appearances. Luca Oyen had a few goals in him, but also showed his creative side. 20-year-old Belgian with 14 goal contributions. The Moroccan Ruiz Atil. I'm expecting a bit better output from him, but they are growing and that's all that matters. Two goals and one assist for him. Jimenez off the bench with two goals. David Ayala also had a memorable campaign with one goal and two assists, just like his CDM partner Gianluca Buzio. The American earning a plus five upgrade to his overall. Bereda, our homegrown talent with six assists and a goal. As Ionot Radu, he could have been the secret ingredient to this survival formula with seven clean sheets. I'm sure the Romanian helped us out in so many games as we continue to scroll on down. Taking a current look at this overview, we do have a very thin squad with only 25 players overall. The roster isn't looking too chunky, especially now that we're losing these three Chinese originals. With the highest price tag, it's our Argentine at 21 years of age, the first player to enter the 80s, Ozorko, with a 52 million pound valuation. Mission accomplished, Extinct FC lives to fight another day as they are set to duke it out for the second year running in the top flight. Now we'll proceed into season three with a couple of transfer dealings I've got here. Firstly, it's another free agent. Yes, he will be the only one for this season. I know it's not that realistic, but when I see a 17 year old Brazilian center back, Teixeira Roca at a 67 overall, it's pretty tempting. Quite possibly a regen, maybe of Thiago Silva. I'm not quite sure, but we're going to accept him into the team. Another player arriving for absolutely zero. And we've got ourselves a left back in a three of the back formation does it really work? I'm actually deciding to throw in a third team sheet, just tactically change things up. So in order for this second team to actually function, we need a brand new left back. So I've gone for my trusty Kiwi. I've signed him so many times this year in career mode, Liberato Kakache. Left wing back, left back, left mid can pretty much play anywhere on the left hand side. We are living for that versatility for 24.7 million pounds. Don't know if they're necessarily the signings we desperately need. However, they are luxury signings just whenever we decide to play with that four at the back formation. The 4 one, one, four, whatever it is, we've got our brand new man and the only left back on the roster. Here is another addition to Extinct FC, a player that is going to increase our depth and quality and provide a little bit more competition for Oyen on the left hand side. It is Mohamed Tabuni, who I'm planning on converting into a left winger. The 21 year old Dutchman arrives from AZ Alkmaar for 12.6 million pounds, and that has completely exercised our entire transfer budget. You can see right there, Cam slash left wing. I want him to be a fully fledged backup for the two boys on the flank. So we're going for the left winger conversion. It's going to take 16 weeks. That's fine by me. We fended off interest from PSG and now the 21 year old Dutchman is our brand new number 27. Bring on deadline day, I say. A nice, simple, straightforward transfer window. No real drama. So our summer spending ends there. We've already laid the foundations. The solid structure is there. Now all they've got to do is grow and develop, get even better and form better bonds as a team. Get that chemistry going. But season four, if we could push into a mid table picture, that'd be ideal. Well, we set our ambitions at the start of the season for a mid-table finish and the boys have crept up into ninth spot, top half of the table status. I mean, it was only by the skin of their teeth, they just made it in by one point. However, it's still an achievement to be celebrated as they were only, what, three points away? One win from a European competition.
competition or qualifying for it at least. Atletico just seeming to dominate this save so far. They're winning the league. At Barcelona coming in second. Real Madrid and Villarreal make up the top four. Over in the Copa de España, we've got Sporting Gijón moving all the way to the finals. I wonder where our boys got knocked out. It's their earliest finish for quite some time now. Getting eliminated in the round 32 to Castellón 2-0. The Champions League saw Spanish winners with Real Madrid taking it home 1-0 against PSG in the final. And Lazio took down Valencia 2-1 to win the Europa League. You can say we're definitely moving up in the world. Taking a look at player performances this season. Who was the standout star? And again, he's done it four years running now. Huang Jianyu, a Chinese striker we have kept. He just knows how to find the back of the net in Spain. 16 goals and 3 assists for the 24-year-old. We've got Luca Oyen with his breakout campaign so far. The Belgian winger with 11 goals and 11 assists. 22 goal contributions in 37 appearances. Those are some remarkable numbers as we've got the output for Franco Orozco. I was expecting him to be a bit more productive considering he's our highest overall player. 85 overall. He's gone up a plus four. This season, he found the back of the net eight times with five assists. Our homegrown talent, Barreda, still continues to supply us with performances with seven goals and three assists all season long. More identical numbers as Ruiz Atil got himself seven goals and seven assists. Ajax Mariba actually got a bit more of a run in this season with five goals and four. Gianluca Buzio again, as consistent as ever. The American just knows how to produce. CDM, he is just living in his elements. Onana is reveling as his new centre-back role continues to thrive. Our centre-back is the best we've got. The German 22-year-old just has been growing exponentially. As our man in between the sticks, our Romanian Radu with an 80 overall rating. He got himself 10 clean sheets in 41 appearances. Now in terms of market valuation, there is only one man topping this chart and that is going to be our Argentine right winger with a price tag of 90 8.5 million pounds. He is destined to break through that nine-figure range with an 89% boost. He's got no other competition near him. The expectation's there now. We've set ourselves as a La Liga staple. Now it's time to go for gold. Half a decade in. Let's see what season five has to bring. Again, we've encountered another splash the whole transfer budget on one player kind of moment. We had to redeem contracts, sign new deals, and it stung our initial transfer budget. However, for some reason, we've agreed a deal for Wesley Fofana exactly on his market valuation. 40 million pounds. Leicester had no problem giving him away. And the 23-year-old centre-back, I know he's been brutally injured in real life in a recent friendly. Hopefully he gets better and he gets out back onto the pitch because that was a terrible leg break. Whatever he did to his leg was absolutely horrific. But here for Jiangsu Suning, he is joining Extinct FC and is going to be one of our main components in defence. I'm aware this is completely irrelevant to our, how our team is progressing right now, but we have got USA winning the Copa America against Venezuela. Such an out-of-left field final as Brazil and Argentina left to fight for third place. And I can't help but think how much of an indirect impact we had with, you know, the likes of Gianluca Buzio. He's in the starting level right there, partnering up with McKenney. Matt Miazga, the captain of the team. Our boys not only do it on the club level, but internationally, they've been able to take their form to their nation. After the billions of pounds that have been spent today, we're content just to rest on our laurels and sit back. Here is our starting eleven, of course, with Fafana, the main addition. He just absolutely takes that back line to a new level. Can Huang Zhang Yu keep scoring these goals as our Chinese captain leading the line? We're going to have to find out. As season five, Extinct FC are as ready as they've ever been. It's taken us half a decade, but we're here qualifying for European competition as they finished in six. Jiangsu Suning, a team that is no longer with us. They're going to be kicking ball in the Europa League come season six as it's been 63 points collected this year. They were outside the top four by only three. So one more win and they could have been in the Champions League but we'll save that for later. It's been a compelling campaign from 14th to 9th now 6th. Over in the Copa de España our boys got knocked out in the semi-finals okay 4-0 against Valencia it was an absolute belting however it's the furthest they've come so far in this competition. You know me I love a cheeky bit of cup silverware as over in the Champions League it was Manchester City to win 2-1 against Bayer Leverkusen and the Europa League saw Dortmund lose out to Barcelona 1-0. But we'll take a look at our best performers, the charts, the squad hub. What are you saying? We've got who Huang Jan Yu, who I just think is going to be immortalized in this club as the top goal scorer every campaign. The Chinese marksman with 13 goals and 3 assists approaching his prime. He got himself 45 appearances. The captain is leading by example. His overall has gone completely gangbusters, receiving a plus 4, going up to an 85. He could potentially go down as a channel icon. We move on over to Franco Orozco. He's our own Messi, but he's not producing Messi-like numbers. I would really hope his production increases the more we get into European competition as the Argentine managed to score 12 goals and 2 assists. I'm liking this so far. I'm seeing players that haven't really gotten much game time or love in the starting 11 pop up as Ajax Moriba 
with 10 goals and 3 assists. We've got Santiago Jimenez. We converted him into a proper cam. And now the Mexicans getting shown some love in the middle of the park. 8 goals and 1 assist for the 24-year-old. Luca Oyen, we were expecting something like last time out. 22 goal contributions, but he's fell way short with 6 goals and 3. Gianluca Buzio with one of the most trademark campaigns you'll see from the American. 4 goals and 8 assists. So consistent. Sabuni in off the bench with 4 goals. It's our favorite Moroccan playmaker, Rui Zatil, actually played less games. Might have had an injury riddled campaign. I'm not quite sure. David Ayala with 2 goals. Wesley Fafana in his first year up to an 85. 1 goal for him. What I'm really loving about our team right now is that all the goals have been kind of shared across. We haven't had 2 or 3 main marquees. Goals have been shared around the pitch as Ionot Radu with 46 appearances. He managed to claim 18 clean sheets. In a season where they have set out a statement, I feel like this team has shown their ability to keep consistent solid growth. It has been steady, plus two, plus threes, and that has all accumulated now to a bunch of players being in the 80s, transformed into worldwide superstars. Our South American Orozco valued at 108.5 million pounds, but you know how we said before, he had no real competition fighting for that top spot. Well then, Jan Yu has entered the chat. The Chinese striker now boosted up 88%. He's reached a 96 million pound transfer market value, and he is hot on his tail. It's a footballing story for the ages, this revival. So BCHD's love and investment towards the club, however, the job is not done. They are fighting on multiple fronts, competing in other continental competitions. It is going to be one hell of a ride. Wow, okay, it looks like the board are giving us free license to just upgrade and roam around with any part of our squad. They've just thrown us a lump sum of 120 million pounds. They said, yep, go out and play with it. Have fun in the transfer market, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now the player with the pleasure of being our first signing in the summer transfer window is our brand new number 19, Jovan Cabral, for 69.9 million pounds. Haha, <laughs> funny. We have the 27-year-old in his prime from Cape Verde. I've been actually really intrigued by this guy. I haven't really signed him before in career mode, so I thought, why not? Let's go ahead and make it happen. He's arriving from Hoffenheim, and he will be taking over Luca Oyen's starting spot. I just feel like he hasn't got it yet. He's too inexperienced. His productivity isn't really impressing me, so let's hope the African is Cape Verde African. I've never really signed anyone from Cape Verde. Let's hope Cape Verde's finest can help us out in the attacking department and fire us to glory. Here we are. We've had a couple of transfer periods without drama. However, we have hit a brick wall, basically. We have had to think on our feet here and bring in a goalkeeping replacement for our Dutch number one because Bart Verbruggen absolutely went haywire and sent in a transfer request. So we've decided to swap him with Matvi Sofanov. The Russian shot stopper will join us. Hopefully, he'll overtake Radu and be our main number one as we had to exchange a deal with him plus 20 million pounds over to Arsenal. With our third pickup of the window, you know it's not a Sir PCHD video without an Italian stallion. I'm pretty sure you know this by now if you've been watching my content for a while. So we've had to go for an extra option in attack. It's Eddie Salcedo. We've headed to the Serie A for a brand new goal getter just in case Huang isn't firing. We've negotiated a very specific price point for the 23 year old considering we've drained literally our entire budget. It could have been a summer that threw us into turmoil. A couple of players unhappy, a few transfer requests. Thankfully, we've got it all sorted and under control right now as we've spent 123.8 million pounds on transfers this summer with Cabral, Safanov and Salcedo joining us. We're going to have to say goodbye to day one Verbruggen, but it had to be done. Nonetheless, it was for the greater good. This is how our strongest starting 11 is looking with Cabral, a brand new addition on the left-hand side, just making our attack look that much more potent. Ruiz Attila is back in the starting lineup and I've decided to throw Safanov in between the sticks just to get him some first team game time and propel his career forward. In season 7, the Europa League is going to be a test. Their debut campaign in continental competition being drawn in Group C alongside Braga, Trabanspor and FSCB. Spanish football has now got themselves a brand new top 4 contender as Jiangsu Suning Serb BCHD pulled it off again in 6 years. They have now qualified for Champions League football finishing 4th and not only just that, they have comfortably been in the top 4. Barcelona 11 points behind us. The Catalan Giants are in the mud as Real Madrid win the title with 90 points. Valencia and Atletico Madrid just on top of us, so I guess we were outside title favourites. I'm not going to gloat too much because there's still that next level we need to achieve if we want to get that La Liga trophy as Espanyol Mallorca and Las Palmas all get relegated. Over in the Copa de España, unfortunately, we couldn't make it all the way to the final, yet Safe win that one out against Atletico 3-2 and it's been a shock elimination over in the quarters as Real Valladolid knock us out 2-0. Now, in the Europa League, our debut season, it has seen us go all the way to the final. We are matched up against the French outfit, 
Leo, this match would have meant a whole lot more if we didn't qualify for the top four. Thankfully, there's not too much pressure on us, but it looks like we've been undefeated so far. Topping Group C, over in the round of 32, taken down Porto 5-2. The round of 16 saw us eliminate Standard Liege 3-1. The quarters, an absolute demolishing of Roma, 6-1 on aggregate. And in the semis, to book our spot in the big dance, we won it on away goals against Leverkusen. I guess now, here goes nothing. It's our starting 11 right here before you. Can we claim our first ever trophy of the rebuild? so far with a team that doesn't exist and it's Jovan Cabral with the winner. Orozco got to start it off in the 16th minute. Deli Ali got the equaliser and then to start off the second half we got the second and never looked back. I know it might not mean much but it's honest work. It's a piece of silverware we can tick off the bucket list, put it in the collection and look back on it with absolute awe as we go in to check our end of season review. Who was our top goal scorer? We finally have a new candidate. Our blissful South American who has stolen the show so far for Zhang Su Sooning 28 goals and 5 assists for Rosco, including that Europa League final goal. That's 33 goal contributions. Insane stuff. Production has still remained at a pretty constant level with Huang Jian Yu. He's our captain for a reason since day dot. 23 goals and 4 assists for the Chinese striker. I think Santiago Jimenez is trying to evolve into our brand new starting cam. The Mexican with 15 goals and 5 assists in 36 appearances. Definitely the system manager giving him a lot of love. Jovan Cabral in his debut campaign scoring 13 goals and four assists. We have Aliax Moriba really revitalizing his career. Didn't really have the best of starts. Now all of a sudden he's back amongst the goals. 25 goal contributions which is absolutely sick. We've got Amadou Onana reaching the 90s. Is he the first player to be 90 overall rated? I think the Belgian is now a highest rated player. Just crept up on us out of nowhere. Seven goals and two assists from center back. How does he do it? Again it's Gianluca Buzio with what he does best. Two goals and nine assists. Bereda two goals and four. There was no competition when it comes to the goalkeeping spot as Ilnot Radu continued to maintain that starting position with 21 clean sheets in 57 matches. And our highest valued asset. Oh, it's a race that's come down to the wire. It's close. Orozco, who's been on top for a while, but his steady contention from Onana, it's starting to heat up. We're dealing with price tags in the nine-figure range, and they have deserved every single penny. As this young crop of players, all in the mid to high 80s, all have the potential to hit 90 in the next couple of seasons. It's been an almighty climb re-establishing this club and giving them a football identity entity over in Spain. Now, seven seasons later, they get greeted with Champions League football. Unprecedented time see as a team originally from China is going to compete in Europe's elite club competition. You can bet your bottom dollar that for the Champions League, we're leveling up. We're bringing in a franchise player. It is our first signing of season seven. Takafuza Kubo will he bring us some luck as the Japanese playmaker is one of the most exciting youth prospects coming out at the moment is the future of Japanese and Asian football. And now he's going to be balling out with the opportunity not only to win La Liga but the Champions League. Can this year be our year? In the past couple of seasons it's proven that we don't really have a main starting camp. Between Ruiz Attil and Jimenez it's all up for grabs so Kubo show them what you're made of. It's our first player sale to report on in such a long time. It feels like forever since we've had to say farewell to one of our lads as it is free agent David Alba who we picked up on a free all those years ago. The Spanish centre back never really cut it for me. He's an emergency option in at the back so I've decided to flip him for almost £5 million as a 27-year-old joins Porto on a permanent deal. You can see we've set out some lofty goals this season. Winning the title is a must for Sir BCHD. That's what the media is reporting as we have secured yet another signing this season. It's for the back line again as we've gotten the deal done for Alessandro Bastoni. The Italian centre-back arrives from Manchester City for £81 million. Again, we're buying players in their prime, ready to perform at their peak. Yet another Italian stallion joining potentially the starting 11. He's going to prove to be a handy player in the back line in case of injuries and suspensions. We all know in multiple competitions, there is depth and quality you need to compete. The six foot three prospect, I don't think I've actually signed him this year. That's what I like doing towards the end of the game cycle is just signing all the wonder kids that I haven't got around to yet. And Bastoni definitely ticks that box. We've absolutely splashed the funds in this summer transfer window. Almost 200 million pounds spent on two players. Alba said his farewells and he is our starting 11 for season. Season number seven. I can't lie, it's looking pretty ferocious. We're training up Kubo to be a cam. We've got Eddie Salcedo. It's the Champions League for the first time, and right here in Group H, we've been drawn alongside Juventus, Dinamo Kiev, and Slavia Praha. So not the toughest group. But we are gonna have to fight tooth and nail for that front spot with Juve. I can see the protests happening, the flags flying high. Sir BCHD, get him out of the club. Hashtag a BCHD ad of Jang Su Suning. Well, unfortunately, you've got no choice because your club doesn't exist anymore. Here we are promising 
rushing to win the league and we fumble the bag in third. It wasn't even close really. Like It was a 10 point margin between us and Real Madrid at the top. Finishing on level terms with Barcelona. Still qualifying for the Champions League next year. So unfortunately we couldn't capture the title as Sporting Gijon, Almeria and Alaves all get relegated. Here we've got the Copa de España. We actually took that one out. Okay, it is not a trophy list season. We do have a piece of silverware in the bag. And you all know I'm a big fan of domestic cup competitions. It was a 2-1 win over Real Sociedad in the final. They beat Barca along the way. They took down Granada. After coming close so many years, after so many magical runs, they finally made something of it. And we have another piece of silverware to celebrate. It was a Manchester derby in the Champions League final. The Red Devils came out on top. It was a 2-1 win. Meanwhile, our performances in Group H, where did it all go wrong? Here we came out in second against Juventus on either goal difference or head-to-head. -head. We actually progressed past Arsenal in the round of 16. A 3-3 away goals victory. And then the quarterfinals, we faced Inter and lost out 3-2 on aggregate. That is where our run ended and our European dream came crashing down. You can't fault the lads, really. Atletico, Barca and Real are pretty much unplayable in Spain right now, this far into career mode. And I wasn't expecting them to reach the final in their debut campaign in the Champions League. Meanwhile, we just get another season under our belts, more growth and player performances like this. Huang Jiang Yu, I'm so glad we kept you on the books because 28 goals and 4 assists, that is 32 goal involvements this season. But the 27 year old, now up to a 90 overall, becomes the second player to join the 90s club and the third is going to be Orozco, our South American dynamite. The Argentine scoring 17 goals and getting 9 assists. And on the other flank, on the left side of the pitch, we've got Jovan Cabral coming in with a bang, 17 goals and 4 assists for him. Mamed Tabuni off the bench with 7 goals and 1. We've got Iliax Moriba. The Spaniards still continuing to perform in the spine as Kays Ruiz Attil, I think he claimed back his cam spot. The Moroccan with 5 goals and 9 assists. We've got Claudio Mendes in and off the bench with 5 goals and 1. Luca Oyen with a decent little campaign. Santiago Jimenez making the most out of his little game time. 3 goals and 3 assists. Unfortunately, the Japanese Dynamo, we haven't converted him into a cam yet. It's taken quite a while in training and therefore no game time has flown his way. At CDM, he's putting up some crazy numbers and finally we've started to see a bit of parity in the goalkeeping situation. Looks like it's shared between these two. Safanov and Radu continue to be both called upon in between the sticks. With 19 clean sheets between the two, our highest valued asset right now is back on top of the pile, nearly eclipsing Messi's overall rating. With a price tag of £148 million, not too far behind him is our Chinese target man. Where would we be without this guy's goals? £147 million, he is actually not too far away from clinching top spot. And I now can confirm we have six players in that nine figure value range. A guy can you an effort there from the lads, but we go again for season eight. Despite the board giving us free license to spend nearly £200 million this window again, I think I'm going to take the executive decision and just not sign any players. I know it's a weird one. These videos are all about signing the biggest and best talents every single year when you get the opportunity. But I think I believe in the bunch of lads we've accrued over these, what, eight seasons? It's up to them now. They got to go out there, grow, develop, and up their game as it's going to be one tough push for every single piece of silverware available. I think they've got what it takes. If so BCHD believes in you, then you know you've done something right in life. In our second shot of Champions League glory, we've been drawn up into Group C and taking a look at the teams we're up against, it seems pretty straightforward with Monaco, RB Salzburg and Dynamo Kiev. We should be getting the job done here and finishing top. I don't want to hear any more excuses. I'm remaining hopeful. I'm crossing my fingers that this might be our year. It's been an absolute slog on their way to the title, but now the boys can celebrate that they are Spanish champions of La Liga, finishing on top with 93 points, only dropping three games this season as Barcelona were hot in their tails. They fended them off. It's been an ideal season, very well deserved. Moving on over to the Supercopa, and we have a 3-0 win again against Real Sociedad. They must hate our guts at the moment as we take home another piece of Spanish domestic silverware on over to the Copa de España, and we have taken home the Spanish treble. It's domestic domination from Yang Su Suning with a 2-1 win against Barca in the final. I'm pretty sure we've collected an 100% record in every final we've been in. Nonetheless, here was our Champions League efforts. Group C saw us stop at 6 wins out of 6, 18 points. We saw the writing on the wall and in the round of 16, we progressed past Arsenal again 6-3. It was another close encounter against an English opposition. We beat out Chelsea 4-3 on aggregate and in the semis, it was an all-English slaughtering on our way towards the final. A 5-2 win against Manchester United to see us up against Real Madrid in the big dance. Oh boy, this one is going to be heated. Technically, it's an all-Spanish final in 2028, but Real Madrid finished down in fifth. How did they go ahead and do a madness in the Champions League? That is very...
very sus. It was only a matter of time before it all went to plan. Lady Luck has been on our side, not only that, but dynamic potential, the right signings, and here were our best performers this season, firing us into a Champions League final, a domestic treble, plus the chance to win a quadruple. It's Mr. Reliable again. He lives and breathes goal scoring. Huang Jiang Yu with 37 goals and 6 assists this time around. A goal scoring machine that we're never going to see again. So drink it in. Watch it all unfold as Franco Orozco, yet another season one, day one player, 25 goals and 22 assists. I've been really criticizing him throughout this whole entire rebuild about his production and he has completely shut me up with those numbers. 47 goal involvements in 59 appearances. You can't comprehend this stuff as Gobral got himself 17 goals and 4. Aliax Mariba from midfield almost hitting the 90s with 9 goals and 6 assists. Gianluca Buzio has been nothing but exceptional at CDM. Moving on to Ruiz Attil, now progressing up to an 87 overall rating. The Moroccan with 6 goals and 7. Mohamed Sabouni has played a bigger part than I expected as Amadou Onana with 5 goals and 7 assists. Takafuzu Kubo successfully converted into an overall cam. However, only getting himself 27 games, 5 goals and 1 assist. Our homegrown talent nearly eclipsing the 90s. We've got Luke Oyan and Jimenez still playing their part as we throw some love to the goalkeeping situation. Safanov and Radu have shared that position completely 50-50. Like a phoenix, this club has risen from the ashes. We gave them a second chance. Their investors pulled out. They're a club that no longer exists in real life. So in FIFA 21, if you want to make a save with them, just to remember them and send them off in glory, this is your last career mode opportunity to do so. They're not going to be in FIFA 22 as Yang Su Suning will be forever remembered on this channel. We've assembled a super squad of amazing talents that have grown some unknown heroes that we never heard of before this video. Six players have now entered the 90s overall. If you made it this far, let me know who is your player of the rebuild. Was it Huang Jan Yu, our captain, who potentially could lift up the Holy Grail tonight? Our very own reincarnation of Messi, Franco Orozco, or was it an unexpected hit like Onana? For some strange reason, the game has been scheduled for 4am, but we're ready to grit our teeth and get the job done out there tonight. These are the two starting 11 side by side. The Sun Seed or get yourselves prepped, get yourselves ready for a non-existent masterclass. Extinct FC are coming out to battle and it's Sir BCHD's Warriors entering the pitch. After a long, drawn out eight seasons, it has been a marathon rebuild. That was our journey to the final. Live it up, drink it in. Let's get this party started as Real Madrid will kick us off. Valverde gets the ball rolling. Here we go, Vinicius Jr. Tracked down by Bastoni. And we've got Bella Kotchap to give the ball away. Ozorko in a bit of a tough situation. He's completely lost possession. In a dumbfounded moment, he's had a brain snap. And all of a sudden, Real Madrid take full advantage. Three minutes in, in a fairy tale run to a Champions League final. The true underdog story hasn't even got itself a bright beginning. It's a lapse of concentration. And a team like Real at this stage of the game are going to be lethal in front of goal. We've got to limit the amount of chances like that tonight. As the volley completely flies past Radu, Sir BCHD completely disgusted on the sidelines. It's 1-0 to the Galacticos. In a deadly scenario, Takafuza Kubo against these former employers is not going well for us so far tonight failed to get into the game and now Real Madrid are all over us we've got Luke Shaw pushing forward now back on over to Luke Shaw he's playing at a right wing role ball in the box oh my goodness man I can't even say my words properly because Radu had to Superman punch that away Gianluca Buzio back on over to Takafuza Kubo we've got Huang Janyu spreads the ball out wide Ozorko is ready waiting and it's a nice little fake shot back inside to our number nine we cut back in. The opening is there for Gianluca Buzio. But it's Courtois who meets it with a strong palm and denies us for a corner. Who is a defensive threat? Who is an aerial threat? Onana, very tall and powerful. He's very lanky. Surely he can get to the ball first in a strong header. And it's just flashed past the post. Are you kidding me? The Belgian rising like a salmon. And he goes unrewarded. Cabral back inside to Ayala with a nice little La Croqueta. To fool the defense and all of a sudden Huang Jan Yu, our captain, it will be fitting for him to open the scoring. It was a terrible shot. Easy save for the Belgian in net. Oh, lovely challenge from Cabral. How is that a foul? Referee, he's giving away soft free kicks. European Giants favored by the referee. It is Dybala to go for it, but Radu read it all the way. Open up the field. We have got, oh, a lovely bit of space there. Where have the Real Madrid defense gone? It's Takafuza Kubo one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to sweaty that across and absolutely get the goal. That is what we needed. We were risking things there, and it's an equalizer. Jovan Cabral with the goal to get us back into the match. For some reason, from that free kick, Real Madrid pushed their entire team forward into our half. All it took was one decent break, and the ball in by Huang. It was a simple pass back for Kubo. 
Kubo and into an empty net. That's the easiest goal he's going to score in his life. All of a sudden now it's game on. Ibala, ball outside, it finds Vinicius Jr. Bastoni tries to shut him down and Radu has to come for it again. He doesn't deal with it and has to force it away for a corner. That is going to be the break. The first 45, it's even Stevens. One apiece. Hopefully we can decide things in the second. Otherwise, we might be headed all the way. Barrera. We're finding some decent possession in the opposition. Final third. Barrera, ball outside to Orozco. No runners into the middle. We have to wait. And Skriniar got the vital touch. Ooh, Cabral wins the ball. And again, Newhouse caught in a sticky situation, similar to us in the first half. Conceding the first goal, Takafuzu Kubo's offside. A referee let that one go on. It would have been a great way to get a goal against his former employers, but it's not to be. He's a mile offside. All of a sudden, there's so much space. And Ayala has to track back. It's Dybala. With the shot, no, he's going to pass it out wide to Valverde and Onana has to clear that one away. Buzio couldn't get clear. And now Vinicius Jr. with the shot. Radu, we kept the faith in him and the Romanian has pulled off a super save to deny Real the second. Again, James Madison not fully cleared. Ta uh, not Takafuzu Kubo, Vinicius Jr. All of a sudden, our defense can't deal with him. We knock him off his perch and there will be no soft penalty awarded. Back on over to Newhouse. Buzio has to come in with the challenge. Ayala heads it down. And now we can get started on something special. The attack is looking extremely deadly right now. The pace of Azorko. The Real Madrid defenders can't deal with him. Moves back inside. The movement is there. And again, the number nine can't find the space needed. Azorko on the volley. And that was a terrible shot. We panicked. And it will be five minutes left for us to try to find a winner. Or else we're looking like we're heading for extra time. Brilliant ball inside for a game-winning assist. Now we have to patiently wait. Buzio again. Finds Jang Yu back inside. Buzio, all of a sudden, Takafuzu Kubo's there. All he needs to do is hit it. And oh, that was a defensive mishap waiting to happen. Literally seconds away from extra time. Let's not stuff this up. Surely the referee will end it there. We're headed for an extra half an hour and possibly penalties to decide it. It's not going well for us in attack. Real Madrid reading us like a book. And look at this counter-attack. Vinicius Jr. inside to Chiesa. It is a lunging challenge. In from our defender, Takafuzu Kubo. Outside, lovely little build up Barrera. Jiang Yu, who needs a shot on goal tonight. He is yet to really get into the game. And look at the Chinese man go. A striker sends a perfect ball inside. And it's a cracking shot from our homegrown talent, Barrera. The Spanish midfielder with an absolute rocket in the Champions League final. In the 102nd minute, all of a sudden, things started to open up. Real Madrid have been resolute despite the equaliser. They have been rock solid. And all we needed was that one clear-cut opportunity. And it falls into the path of Barrera. A beautiful little assist from our captain. And we've gotten the lead for the first time tonight with eight. 15 minutes still left to play. Daniel has gotten himself on the score sheet. Our substitute's coming on. It is a triple change. Read them and weep, Real Madrid fans, because this is not slipping. Onana, no, he's giving it away. He's been flawless tonight, but that's a dead giveaway. And all of a sudden, gifting Real Madrid a chance to explore the box. Newhouse, all of a sudden, we can't take a control of him. Look at him go. One minute of stoppage time. It's do or die for Madrid. As Chiesa, ball inside, what a cross, it's curved ever so perfectly, Onana pushed down Valverde, the referee didn't see anything wrong with that, and we have gotten away with murder at the Sun Ciro, what a dramatic end, a little bit of a penalty scare there, my heart was in my mouth, I must admit, but Onana had to do what he had to do, it was a Chiellini-esque performance, and out here tonight, it was a nail-biting 2-1 victory in extra time, nothing much could split these two, I don't know how this Real Madrid team finished in fifth, but hey, that has been it, Res Resurrecting an extinct club as their investors backed out. We brought new life into Zhang Su Suning. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this unique concept type of rebuild challenge. If you did, make sure to drop the video a like down below. Comment your favorite player in the team. If you're new around here, drop a subscription and put those notification bells on as we got content coming out every single day. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The links are in the description below. Now I'm going to leave you guys with the trophy celebrations as the Chinese club reign supreme over Europe. As always, I've been so BCHD. Have a great day, and I'll catch you all in the very next video. Running out of time, and I'm running out of patience. Don't know what my water wild for spacious. Run away from the back. 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 Keep on holding on, even though I know I'm wasted. Answer to the question, yeah, I know I'm impatient. Yeah, uh -huh. Some things you can't control, baby. You've got.
hard to let it go Some things you can't escape Guess it's up to me to find a way Hello, 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 I'm at your door I'm looking for answers I need, I need, I need, I need, need to know Why you never answer? It goes on and on, on and on, on And it goes on and on, on and on